Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us today as we sing some wonderful old hymns, as we pray to God and as we hear from his word. Let's begin by singing our first hymn. Now let's talk to God with a prayer of confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbours as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We deserve your condemnation. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and our neighbours and to live for your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of assurance from 1 John chapter 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody sins, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. And now, please say with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We're now going to hear our Bible passage for today. Our Bible reading today comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. It's so good to be with you again. Two young children were talking with each other about parent problems. One of them complained to the other saying, first they teach you to talk, then they teach you to walk, and as soon as you learn how, they tell you to sit down and shut up. Well, in today's passage, it appears that Jesus' disciples were attempting to shut up the children and prevent them from coming to see Jesus. Mark tells us that people were bringing their little children to Jesus, hoping that he would touch them and along with his touch, bless them. What were the disciples doing anyway when they tried to send the children away from Jesus? Did they think that they were trying to protect Jesus and give him a chance to rest? Or did they feel that children weren't important to Jesus? That children didn't belong in God's kingdom? Well, the disciples' behaviour here seems a little strange since it was quite customary for Jewish rabbis to bless children. And in that blessing, the rabbis were bestowing on the children the hope of a life filled with health, joy, prosperity and peace. Well, whatever caused the disciples to do what they did, Mark tells us that Jesus thought and acted very differently. Over the centuries and even today, it seems that some Christians have adopted the same attitude as the disciples. They, unfortunately, also either try to send children away or they don't consider children as very important members of God's kingdom. It's important to listen to children. They hear things that we no longer hear. The Steven Spielberg movie E.T. was about exactly that. Children have secrets not available to grown-ups. They can do Rubik's Cubes and understand computers. They have priorities we once had and now have lost. A teacher who listened to children used to take off his hat and bow to them at the beginning of each school day because they were, he explained, the future in our midst. Not surprisingly, one of the pupils was a boy called Martin Luther. The custom in some churches is to keep the adults in the sanctuary and send the children out. Many children think of the church as a place where adults keep telling them to be quiet and then they go out. I wonder what Jesus would think of all that. Perhaps he would choose to go out with them. <laughs> the truth is we don't listen to children. We assume they should listen to us. A father shouts at a two-year-old at a neighbouring restaurant table, I don't care what you want, you listen to me. Children spend a lot of time sitting while adult voices talk at them. If you've ever watched that scene in the sci-fi movie E.T., the child in E.T. tries to tell her mother about the strange and lovable being who has arrived at their house and who is somewhat the worse for getting into the beer. But her mother is unloading groceries. She's tired out and has no time to talk. What is it you're saying, she says. 
as she swings the refrigerator door open and knocks E.T. down. I think you've killed him, says the little girl. But the mother still doesn't hear. We don't listen to children much. We ignore them in stores and serve the adults first. We hang pictures high up on our walls as though everyone was tall. We ask children what they're going to be when they grow up, as though they're nothing in this present state. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Worship is livelier and richer with them present. There's no need to trivialise worship for the sake of children. The church has stressed the importance of understanding. But all understanding is not intellectual. All learning is not verbal. Children worshipping alongside adults who are expectant and reverent before the presence of God learn lessons they will remember all their lives. Nor should Christian education be for children only. Adults have much to learn from children. Children are an important part of the church community. Jesus said the kingdom of God must be received like a child. It's true that the Apostle Paul said he gave up childish ways when he grew up. But childishness is not what Jesus is referring to. Childishness is petulance. Childish people imagine the whole world is centred around them and if they cry loudly enough, they're going to be served. Some childish people are adults. Jesus, on the other hand, asks us to be childlike. He's speaking about that open, trusting response, that part of us which laughs and cries and is willing to risk. Listen to the children, not just the children who are young in years. There is a child inside of all of us, no matter how old we are, who needs to be listened to. Who knows, when we adults start listening more to the child within us, we may learn to be more joyful, less weighed down with worries and anxieties, able to enjoy the wonder, beauty and mystery of life all the more. The child in us can show us the gift of life and help us live it to the fullest. The child in us shall cherish and share the gift of imagination and creativity. The child in us can reveal the grace of God all around us and help us speak more intimately in parent-child conversation. As adults, we can have a tremendous amount of influence on children. We can take our role as mentors seriously, making the church and our family the most welcoming place we possibly can for children. What children remember about church in their younger years will stay with them for the rest of their lives. So like Jesus, hopefully we can be an, as inclusive towards children as he was, valuing them as precious members of God's kingdom because they model for us the marvellous grace of God. They're the lowest and the least in our society, yet in Christ's presence, they are first and foremost in God's realm. In grace, God, through the person of Jesus, comes to them and to us, offering his unconditional love as a free gift. And that's good news for all of us. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have made us all children of God as we put our trust and faith in you, no matter how old or how young we are. May we love one another, young and old, and may we feed one into one another a love and a grace that abounds through the Spirit of Christ in our families and in our churches. We pray that together that we would fulfill your promise of the kingdom of God. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. I hope that's a great message for you today. Have a great one. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves 
Let's come before God now in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are a loving and gracious God. Thank you that you have offered us forgiveness and the gift of new life in you. Thank you for never leaving us on our own. Instead, you sent your spirit who is constantly rebuking and correcting us, helping us to become more like your son, Jesus. Help us to fix our eyes on you. May we be reminded of your grace and mercy every day. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gospel which gives us hope as we pray for our family and friends. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us. We long for you to be gracious to those who we love who do not know of your saving grace. Father, we ask that you reveal yourself to them. Amen. God of the nations, we pray for Australia. Inspire and direct our leaders to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Bring many Australians to a knowledge of the truth about Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for us all. Amen. We praise you, great God, as the source of all truth, and we come before you knowing that to fear you is the beginning of wisdom. Strengthen us to love you with all our mind, as well as with our heart and strength. We pray that in our schools, colleges, universities, and other places of learning, truth and wisdom may be pursued, prized, and celebrated. Give teachers creativity, clarity, and care, and students a love of learning and an openness to new ideas. Bless us all with cooperation, fairness, and above all, a recognition that the world we study is created, sustained, and redeemed by you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wonderful things in the Bible I see This is the dearest that Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves even me Though I forget 
forget him and wander away. Still Jesus loves me wherever I stray. Back to his dear broken arms do I flee. When I remember that Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. If one should ask of me, how can I tell? Glory to Jesus, I know very well. God's Holy Spirit with mine does agree. Constantly witnessing, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Thanks so much for watching. Let's conclude our service with the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay.